Well, hello again folks, and I hope you're still all in good health, hey. I'm sorry this isn't a more recent film, but due to a bad dose of the cold, and a couple of storms that had recently hit Northern Ireland, I really haven't been out as good few weeks. So it's back into the hard drive to see what I could find. This film's back in from, where is it, December 2014. 2014? My goodness, this has been shelved for a while. Now, I'm sure some of you will probably recognise this farm from other films of mine from many years ago. But I haven't visited this farm for a good while, as the owner sadly passed away, and he was a very nice man. And they currently don't keep as much livestock now as they did back then. So there's not as many birds or even rats knocking about the place as what there used to be. Anyway... Back to this particular morning that I find myself setting up the little pop-up hide called the bush in the corner of the silage pit on top of a heavy rubber mat so I didn't poke any holes through the silage cover. Now I had set up here before on other days as it gave me a particularly good view of a set of posts and railings on top of the silo wall that the birds liked landing on top of. Now there always was birds on and off at this farm, as they come down into the sheds to eat the meal that's set out for the livestock. But at this particular time, the birds had found that the second silo was actually full of crop silage, which is simply a mixture of grass and barley crop, and the crows were quite happily picking the barley out of it. But this wasn't grown and harvested for their benefit, this was to help feed the cattle through the winter. Plus the fact that what the birds don't eat, they dung over. The bars, the walls, the water troughs, which is also a health and safety issue, not only to the livestock, but also to anybody living on the farm. So, I came down in this cold, frosty morning to see if I could discourage them a little bit. Oh why, before you think my head's away with it, I have thrown the two-ply stealth camo net over the little pop-up hide back to front with the black mesh showing hoping that it would look more like a black plastic silage bale from the distance. Man, I haven't wore one of those full face veils for years not since I started using one of the little snoods which is far warmer by the way. Ah, the birds are already here in full force, and I'm still setting up the rifle and the shooting sticks. The magpies were chittering away in the background while I was setting the hide up, and it was still that dark you couldn't see. There's a real mixture of birds too, rooks, jackdaws and magpies. And when you get as many as this knocking about, they can really red up a lot of meal. Finally, I get the rifle on the shooting sticks and load it. And there's a big rook sitting in one of the posts still. This was back when there was no scope cams, no tacticam, no side shot, just a tripod and a camcorder sitting beside me. Real old school stuff. And back when I took nothing but headshots. Of course, the rest of the birds weren't too happy, but rooks and jackdaws will rarely land beside a dead bird, instead just circle around above. The magpies, on the other hand, are a different story. I missed. It was just twitching about too much for a headshot. One of the reasons why I started switching to more heart and lung shots. Ah. 
I didn't miss that one. I think he was too busy looking at the rook I had shot earlier. Most of the birds cleared off after that last shot, but I didn't have to wait too long now before another opportunity appeared. But that was a bit too quick for me. That was one of the main disadvantages of using the camcorder. Once you'd spotted the bird and zoomed in on it, it could quite often fly off before you ever get the shot off. That's something the likes of the Tacticam and the Sideshot scope cam systems really help with these days. But thankfully it wasn't too long before I got a more cooperative individual. Again, things went quite quiet after the last shot, so I decided to go out and lift the birds I'd shot, as the sight of them I think was putting off the other birds from landing on the posts again. And it seems to be working. Man, if I have to keep straddling that gate in this frost, there's going to be an accident. And darn sure, that gate's not going to come off the worst. Our next visitor is a collared dove. But these birds are protected in Northern Ireland and have been ever since I can remember. Hope, wakey wakey you boy ye. That's another one down. The rest of the birds don't seem too happy at the sound of the shot. It's that still and frosty this morning, the sound's probably travelling quite a distance. But it doesn't look like any of them's for landing. Not everything around a farmyard is a pest. These little chaffinches that I think they are don't really cause any problems. Again, I decided to go out and lift that last magpie I'd shot, just in case the sight of it does put the rest of the birds off, and throw it inside the shed door here with the rest of them out of sight, before giving it one last wait to see if anything else pops up. Now, we can legally shoot starlings here in Northern Ireland, but there's not that many of them about the farm, so I decided to wait and see if I could get something bigger. And, sure enough, that's what appeared. A nice big rook.
Isn't it odd that the sound of that pellet hitting that rook sets the birds off in the distance, yet the banging of that gate or door in the background you can hear, they totally ignore. But one benefit of it, it got the magpies riled up again. And with that, the birds cleared off and decided not to come back again. So I decided to call it a morning. Now that's one indication how old this film is, as that is my BSA Super 10 Sandwell Field Sports Custom before it was sent to John Bowkett to have the barrel shortened and blueprinted. Still in its custom schedule a stop too. And this is what all the fuss is about, the crop silage. And you can see the little kernels of barley in it that the birds are after. And I later found out the rats too. Well folks, I hope you enjoyed another blast from the past and a younger looking gentleman using some older filming techniques. Hopefully though we'll get out and get some new footage before long but until then, take care and look after yourselves hey.